this video is going to give you all the information you need to purchase and successfully run a 34-seater tourist bus. When people talk of a bus, they are usually referring to a 50-seater heavy motor vehicle. However, now the trend is more towards 34-seater tourist buses. Customers prefer the privacy of a vehicle that they can charter for their own use. A 34-seater bus costs less to hire than a 50-seater bus and feels the right size and not oversized like a normal bus. Also, with all the different priorities that customers have nowadays, it is difficult to find 50 people who have a common reason to go on a trip. Finding 34 people is easier for arranging a trip. Let us find out how much it would cost to acquire one. What are the loan options and how much does it cost to run per year? A normal run would be close to 400 kilometers per day or 40,000 kilometers per month. You would have to develop good relationships with travel agencies and give them your contact details and vehicle album which they can in turn sell to their customers and get you trips. They usually charge a commission of 10%. It all starts off with the purchase of a chassis. There are ready-built options available with most manufacturers, but it not only costs less to purchase a chassis and have a body built, but is also more flexible to enable us to tailor make the bus to suit the market we are catering to. Bodybuilding is crucial and it can make or break the business. Market preferences should dictate the bodybuilding choice. The bus should be robust and last for seven years without needing too much body work or repair work and should cater to college crowd, retired people who love going on pilgrimages, marriage or function trips where you have people of different ages. The seating layout is normally two into two pushback seats with hat track to keep hand luggage. A large screen TV is a must to keep the passengers engaged. Choice of chassis is from Tata, Isha and Ashok Leland. Mahindra also supplies a chassis but that has not many takers. The chassis approximately costs 14 to 15 lakhs. All the chassis are in the same price range. The best sellers are Tata Ultra and Isha followed by Ashok Leland. The biggest advantage of the Tata and Isha chassis is that they have a front overhang that supports a front door entry. The Ashok Leland Lynx does not have a ready front overhang to support a front door entry into the bus. Choice of chassis is crucial to the success of the business. The Tata Ultra is the most recommended, but there are markets where the Isha or even the Ashok Leland links would make more sense. It all depends on the customer preference and the market the bus would be catering to. The good thing about the Tata Ultra is its low floor height, which makes it easy to get in and get out of. The engine is also non-complicated, tried and tested. However, this reduces the luggage boot size because of the low floor height. Resale value is also to be considered before deciding on the choice of chassis. Isha vehicles are extremely smooth and come with the latest technology due to their tie-up with Volvo. The mileage of the vehicle would be approximately 7 kilometers per liter. The vehicle dealer would give you all the information on the loan options available and depending on your profile, you should be able to select the best loan for your needs. EMI would come to 45,000 per month on an average for a fully built bus for a five year term. We would have to bring forward a capital of 13 lakhs 
for all expenses including loan down payment. Cost of bodybuilding is again the same. You should be able to get an air conditioner for an extra 3 lakhs which would take the total cost of the bus to approximately 30 lakhs. It is best to have an air conditioner with normally opening windows so that it can run on both AC and non-AC trips and non-AC trips can be converted to AC trips if the customers change their mind. The maintenance costs of the bus with oil, filter and brake liner changes would come up to 50,000 a year. The best thing about new vehicles is that they come covered with warranty. So this should take care of most of the major expenses that you are likely to incur in the first one or two years. And you have to very carefully watch all the repairs that the bus is undergoing so that you will get an idea as to how much you should budget for repairs once the warranty is over. Tire mileage is something that we have to factor and tire life can be extended by routine wheel alignment and wheel rotation periodically. Tires cost approximately 20,000 a pair and last for at least two years under normal usage that is. A set of new tires for the whole bus would cost 60,000 but that cost can be reduced by using retreaded tires at the rear and purchasing new tires for the front. It is always important to have new tires in the front because nobody can uh, afford a tire burst on a highway when the bus is doing good speed. Also, it all, it's, all, it's better to invest in tubeless tires because these buses do not come or these chassis rather do not come with air suspension. So tubeless tires would help the leaf spring cushion the bus better. And uh, tubeless tires are also safer when you are riding, when we are driving on good roads and if there is any eventuality, a tubeless tire will ensure there is minimum damage for you. Insurance is a big cost and would set us back by almost 70,000. Tax would cost us 25,000 a quarter. Approximating all these costs, it would cost us 10,550,000 rupees to run a 34 seater bus for a year. And calculating it for a month, it is almost 85,000 per month or approximately 3,000 per day. The bus may not run every day, so it is better to go with a monthly calculation. Our target should be to earn at least 85,000 per month apart from fuel and staff salary to ensure that we can operate without any profit or loss. Also, selection of driver is very important since uh, driving styles definitely impact the life of the vehicle and uh, effect on near expenses. They can also give you a bad name in the market if customers go back with bad reviews of driving. Drivers are usually taken care of by the customers. They get approximately 500 rupees a day when they go out on trips and you can pay them somewhere around 15 to 20,000 a month. You should have one driver regular and that driver should be able to get you a standby driver if he is not able to come for a trip. Drivers are well networked. They most probably have their unions and WhatsApp groups. So it shouldn't be difficult for you to have an, a driver arranged immediately and stick with a selected uh, few drivers rather than picking up new drivers. You would also need a cleaner come conductor in the bus. So his job would be to clean the bus, to attend to passengers, to act between a liaison between the driver and the passengers, to load luggage, to get luggage down. So this person can be paid around 10,000 rupees and uh, the incentive for this person is he gets to work with the driver and he can graduate to become a driver and double up his salary. Hope you found this video useful. Bus business is very exciting and if you love automobiles, if you love speaking to people and if you want to make a living out of this, it is one of the best industries you can get into. It will give you a lot of job satisfaction. If you love driving, then don't even think twice about it. It's, it's completely a different experience driving a bus 
you feel so powerful you you can see everything from the top and uh, wish you all the best if you wish to start a business thank you